Hey, I know you're about to watch another video, but before you do, I want to show you a cool new software that can grab and keep someone's attention in a super unique way. It's done by drawing literally anything, and I'll show you how anyone can do it regardless of technical or design skills. As people, we're wired to create as well as watch others create. And by nature, we're also super curious. We tend to want to know and predict what's going to happen next. And this is exactly why we'll sit staring at a screen heavily focused on a video just like this in order to see what's going to happen or be drawn next. This is called a doodle video, and it's one of the very best ways to engage, teach, sell, and entertain an audience. Hi, I'm Brad Callen, and in this video, I'm going to show you how anyone can quickly and easily create doodle videos, just like the one you're watching right now, using Doodly, our drag and drop doodle software that allows anyone regardless of tech skills to create highly engaging professional doodle videos in a matter of minutes. Because doodle videos are fun and engaging, they can get you more clicks, likes, shares, and most importantly sales than any other type of video. Which is why Doodly is now the video tool of choice for over 150,000 businesses all over the world in virtually every industry and profession that you can imagine. Doodle videos are perfect for marketing, teaching, fundraising, personal use, and even inspiring others. After all, one of the keys to a successful video is to capture your audience's attention and keep it for an extended period of time. And since you're still watching this video, you already know how great Doodle videos are at doing just that. Not only are Doodle videos incredibly captivating, but research shows that they massively boost learning and memory retention. As a result, viewers really absorb your message, making your videos that much more impactful. And even better, Doodle videos can make complex or boring subjects fun and easy to understand. So let me quickly show you how simple and easy Doodly makes it to create an interesting professional video. All right, here I am inside the Doodly software, which is available for Mac and PC. You'll notice that you can choose the style of your video, selecting from whiteboard, blackboard, greenboard, glassboard, and for more advanced users, you can even use a green screen background, giving you lots of control over the video style. In this example, let's create a nice looking whiteboard doodle video. You'll notice that Doodly makes it super easy to create your own doodle videos with done for you scenes, hundreds of characters, a huge selection of props and images, royalty free music, and even text. And for the ultimate in customization, you can even upload your own images, fonts, props, and music. Now to create a doodle video, it's really simple. First, I'll add a headline to get people's attention, then center it before adding a character. I like this one. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and add a prop too. I'll resize everything and voila, we have Steve reading a book on his chair. For the next slide, I'm gonna do something a little different. Instead of adding a character or prop, I'm going to use one of Doodly's super convenient done for you scenes. So I'm going to simply drag and drop the scene I want right into my video. As you can see, Doodly is so easy to use that anyone can make Doodle videos, even if they have zero tech or design skills. If you can click or drag your mouse, you can create a professional Doodle video in a matter of minutes. Not only is creating a Doodle video that simple, but we also have a bunch of really cool settings available too. Doodly allows you to customize your video with real hands, cartoon hands, or none at all, seeing transitions with even camera panning, and our smart erase mode to provide the realistic feel that you're looking for. And with just a couple of mouse clicks, you can also easily switch between different doodle video types at any moment. I'll change the doodle video I just created from whiteboard to blackboard in less than five seconds. Plus, you can even record a voiceover directly inside Doodly or add background music by simply choosing from our huge royalty-free music library. And of course, you have the option of uploading your own audio and image files as well. You can also select how long it takes the hand to draw something, so scenes, characters, and props are timed perfectly to your voiceover, should you choose to use one. Oh, and one more thing. When you upload your own image, using our enhanced Doodle Draw technology, you can make cool draw paths like this to teach Doodly exactly how you want to draw your imported images. And when you're done, you can preview your video before exporting it to a variety of formats, sizes, and qualities right to your computer, and you're ready to go. As you can see, Doodle videos do an incredible job of educating, entertaining, and selling, making them one of the best investments you can make in your business. And that's especially true right now. The going rate for professional doodle video creation is anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 to have someone make a video similar to the one that I just showed you. But with Doodly, anyone can create a doodle video regardless of tech skills and experience, meaning you can make dozens of doodle videos without paying ridiculously high fees to professional design firms. 
Now, as you can see, we've really taken the Doodle videos to the next level with this software, and we're really excited to see what you can do with it. And the best part, anyone can create a video, regardless of your technical skills or your experience. So if you're ready to start creating your next Doodle video, we can help you get started in the next 60 seconds. The decision is yours, but it's an easy one to make. So go ahead and click on the button below this video to get started. We really look forward to seeing the videos you create and helping you increase your conversions, your sales, and your leads. Doodly is gonna give you that unfair advantage over your competitors. The button is right below this video, so grab your copy of Doodly today and we'll see you on the other side. Welcome to Doodly, the simplest drag and drop Doodle video creator. In this short tutorial, I'm going to take you on a tour of Doodly so you can get comfortable with the software and what it can do. So let's jump in. When you first open Doodly, you'll go to the My Videos page. It's a dashboard listing all of your Doodly projects, along with some resources that are available to you. Along the top, you've got some thumbnails that will take you to your most recent videos. Here in the middle are all of the Doodly projects you've ever created. You'll notice the title, when it was created, when it was modified, the length of the video, how many scenes it has, and the actions that you can take, such as edit or delete. Now, if you right click on one of the videos, you'll have the option to duplicate it or delete it. Duplicating a video is really handy if you want to make a template and then base future videos off of that template. Here in the middle and bottom section, you have some resources. You can go to the Doodly Marketplace to purchase additional Doodle images if you'd like. The Doodler Toolbox contains all of the different products in the family. You'll see that I own Doodly Enterprise and Doodly Rainbow Add-on. You can also purchase the ones that you don't currently own. For example, in my case, Doodly Elite Masterclass, Toonly, or Voomly. Let's create a new video by clicking Create New Video. You want to give it a title. Select which type you'd like. I'll go for the default whiteboard and select a resolution. I'll just leave it at this default resolution for now and I'll change it if I need to. Click Create. On the left we have the Asset Panel which contains all of the different parts and components that will make up your whiteboard video. So you can have your scenes, characters, props, text, sounds, and marketplace items. They're all in this panel. Then there are some buttons here that you can fiddle with. Categories will arrange the items in different ways based on the category type. All, club, or shared. Right now I have it set to all. Club items are for enterprise users. These are added monthly. They add new images each month. And then shared items are, are items that you may have shared with other users. I don't have any in this case. Now this little beach ball turns Doodly Rainbow on and off if you own it. So if I turn it on, you'll see my images are in full color now. Working with assets is super easy. All you have to do is drag and drop them into your whiteboard. Once in place, you can move them and you can align them. If you click the show grid button here, you have a grid that makes it really handy for lining up items. Hide it. And you'll notice this scene here appears down below in the timeline. If you look at this right now is a four second scene. The timeline has multiple tracks. You've got your video track, your music track, and your voiceover track. This tool here is controls panning and zooming. So if you wanted the camera to zoom in on this man, you would use this tool to do that. So let's add a music track. Go over to sounds. Doodly comes with a large library of free, royalty-free music that you can use on your videos. So you'll just go down 
through the list, listen to them by clicking this little play button and finding what you'd like. Once you find one, you just drag and drop it into the music track. And now you'll notice my video is much longer. It's no longer just four seconds long. It's a minute 45 seconds or thereabouts long. So to add another scene, you simply click this plus button here and you can add additional content and build your scene accordingly. You can also add a voiceover by clicking the plus button. Before we move away from the timeline, I wanted to point out this button here, settings. Now this contains all of the different settings that you can change for your video. So if you want to change it to a, a chalkboard, you can change it, or you could change the hand and you can change the hand style. You can make it left-handed. Maybe you want to make it a cartoon hand and you know, just go crazy with it. You can change the title right here as well as make some changes to how the video acts and its resolution. I'm going to click cancel. Now over here in the right side is the actions panel and you'll see you can save, preview, or export your video. And you have another settings section. You, this time it's scene settings. And it looks very similar to what we had before. And that's because you can change these settings on a scene by scene basis. Or if you leave it checked, it will be consistent across the board. You can also change the animation at the end of each scene. By default, it's swipe left, but you can change that if you'd like. You can also add extra time at the end of each scene, which is really helpful because oftentimes once the hand stops drawing, you want that image to stay on for a little bit longer before it disappears. You can reduce or increase the view as well as control the different items, delay, point, and duration time. Adding the delay means the item will start drawing after the amount of time has elapsed. Duration is how long it takes for the hand to draw the image. You'll notice as I increase or decrease the length of time, the change is reflected down here in the timeline. If you'd like more space for your canvas, you can hide both of the panels and then show them when you need them. Now you may notice there are two types of previews. You have the full screen preview here and you have this smaller preview over here that shrinks down the images. You still see the scene on the right and then you'll see the scene over here when you click play. And you'll notice it corresponds to where the playhead is in the timeline. So if you wanted to real quick just check out a certain section, you could do that. So there's quite a bit more control with this particular preview option. Finally, this upper section of the Doodly interface has some information and links. On the far right, you'll find your name. You can click it to see your user details or log out. Here in the middle is the title of your current video. You can change the name of the title if you'd like by just going in and typing right over it. Clicking My Videos will take you right back to that My Videos page that we went over earlier. Now that you're settled in, it's time to select a board type and hand style for your first video, which you can learn about in our next tutorial video. Thanks for watching! Welcome to Doodly! You might know that Doodly makes it really easy to create whiteboard videos, but did you know whiteboard isn't the only option with Doodly? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the different types of backgrounds that you can use in your Doodly videos. So I have a short video I'm going to show you of the different board types. First is your basic whiteboard, which you're probably familiar with. Next up, 
we have the glass board, and you'll notice that the hand is on the other side of the glass. Here we have a blackboard, so it's a chalkboard. Similarly, we have a green board. You can also choose a custom color for your background. I've selected blue. As well as upload individual images for a custom background image. You'll initially choose your background type when you create the video, but you're not stuck with it. So if you started by choosing the whiteboard background, the default whiteboard, no worries, you can change that at any time. When you first create a new video, you're immediately prompted to select a background. So you can, if you know what you want, pick it now. If you don't know, then you'll pick it later. Right now, I'm gonna go for just whiteboard, just so I can show you how it works. So let's put something in our scene. I'm gonna go ahead and just type something in here. So that's your basic whiteboard. If we hit preview, you'll see the hand in front doing its drawing. Now, what if we wanted to change it? Well, we can do that. We can go over here to settings and we just simply change it. So we wanna do a dark chalkboard, we click it, say okay, and it changes it. It also inverts the text and the colors so that it's, instead of being black on white, it's now white on black. If I wanna change it again, let's say to the glass board, I just simply select it. And now it's back to black on white, except for this white is actually clear, it's glass. As you'll see when I hit preview, the hand is behind the glass. Now there are two types of custom backgrounds you can do. So if we go here and choose custom, the first one is custom color, and you'll notice there's an arrow down here right next to it. You can also choose custom image. We'll start with custom color. Click the color swatch here and choose your color. You can use the color picker to fine tune the color that you choose as well. Click apply and you now have a custom color background. Once again, if we want to do the image background, go to settings, custom, and instead of custom color, pick custom image. Now browse your computer for an, a background image that you'd like to use. You can position and resize what's, how it's going to appear on your screen. Just be doing that. In this case, I have transparency here on both edges, so I want to be really careful not to have the transparency, so then it'll just cut it off. And I think this will look nice, so I'm going to go ahead and click Done and Apply. And that's the basics for the doodly background types. In a future video, we'll go over how to change these scene by scene, as well as change the hand styles. Thanks for watching! tutorial video, we're going to go over the basics of placing your assets into a brand new Doodly video. When you first open Doodly, you have this My Videos page. Click on Create New Video. Select a background style and give your video a title. At this point, you can select your resolution if you'd like, or you can do that when you're getting ready to export it. I'm going to go ahead and choose the one I want and click Create. We're now in the main Doodly interface where we have a blank video ready to go. Now I'm going to be making a short video about a veterinarian. So I'm going to look at the pre-made scenes and see if I can find a scene that's already built that will work nicely for my video. These are a great starting point. Everything's already in place and you can build on them from there. I like this one. It looks kind of like it could be a veterinarian's office. I've got a receptionist and a patient waiting. I don't have a pet, so I'm going to need to add a pet to it. And what's neat about these scenes is everything is individual, right? So you can move things around. 
You can delete items. Maybe you don't want to plant. So you just click the item, click the garbage can, and then confirm by clicking OK. You'll see over here all of the items are listed in the Actions panel. So you can select them that way. You can adjust their position within the scene by moving them forward or backwards. So if I wanted her in front of the desk, I'd move her down here. And of course that looks dumb because she belongs back there, so I'm going to put her back. You can also use these little icons here to move characters forward or backward, and props as well. And then if you want to replace a character, you can either just go ahead and delete the object by clicking the delete can, or you can just select the person or prop and replace them with someone else. So I'm going to go to characters and I'm going to search for somebody that's sitting down by typing in the word sitting and I get some options here. You'll notice here's my original character and here's Jane here sitting. So I don't want her so I'm going to find another character. You'll notice these marked with a D. These are available in Doodly um, Enterprise as part of the Doodly Club. So if you just have the standard version, you're not going to see as many options as I have here. Okay, so I like Jacob. He's He looks a little more casual than this other lady. And I think that would be great for a veterinarian situation. Now you'll notice I'm being prompted to replace the image. So yes, I'm going to click yes, I want to replace. So that replaced her with Jacob, and you'll notice he's facing the wrong way. So right here, I'm going to click this icon and flip him. And then just resize him so that he looks about the right size for the scene. Next, we need a cat. So I'm going to click Props, and I'm going to enter cat in the search bar. And I think this cat right here will be perfect. So I just clicked him, and he's here also drag and drop him and then I'm just going to resize the cat and place him next to the owner and that looks great now over here again in the actions panel you're going to notice that there's a delay of zero and a duration of three seconds for each of the items in this panel so what does that mean well it means that each one is going to come in right after the other. There's no delay between them because it's zero seconds. And it's going to take three seconds for each item to be drawn by the hand. So it's going to go the wall first because it's on the top. And it's going to take three seconds to draw it. Then the cabinets, it's going to take three seconds to draw them. Then the chair, again, another three seconds. Then the woman, and so on and so forth. So if we take a look at it, that's what's happening. Three seconds, then one, two, three, then one, two, three, and so on. You'll notice down here in the timeline, it's about 30, 33 seconds long. So if you want to speed that up a little, or maybe you want to slow something down a bit, depending on what your voiceover is going to be, you can do that, and I'll show you how. You'll do that by adjusting either the delay or duration of your items. For example, let's say we want the background part to be pre-drawn. We don't want to have to see the hand draw every single item. So we're going to just have all of these have a duration of zero. go in and you type zero. You notice how my scene is shrinking in length down below in the timeline? Okay, so I've just saved about 30 seconds worth of drawing right there. And if we take a look at the preview, only the patient and his cat are drawn by the hand. And it takes place in about six seconds as opposed to 33 seconds. So that's one way to adjust the timing of your scene. But what about the delay? What is that? What's an example of that? 
So let's say we have a veterinarian and we want him to come in after a few seconds once these guys are drawn. So let's go ahead and find a veterinarian. I'm going to go in, I'm going to type doctor, and you'll see we have some doctors. Here's one with a dog, so I like that. So let's bring her in. I'm just going to add her because I don't want to replace what I have selected. So I'm going to click no add. Maybe we'll just have her come in over here. Resize the scene. So let's say that we have a voiceover once the man and the cat are drawn. And let's say that's going to take five seconds to be spoken. So what I want to do is say five seconds right here in the delay. So if we hit the scene preview, here comes the patient, here comes the cat. And then now I have about five seconds to talk before my veterinarian comes in. And here she comes. So that's how delays work. So that's the basics of working with your scenes, characters, and props. In the next video, we'll go over adding additional scenes, voiceover, music, and other elements to your whiteboard video. Thanks for watching! In this tutorial video, we're going to go over adding additional scenes, working with audio, and using the camera panning tool. Earlier, we created this scene with the veterinarian's office. Now we want to have a new scene. So in order to do that, we just go down into the timeline and click this plus button, add new scene. And now you'll see I have a blank whiteboard once again, and I can build a scene like we did earlier. This time we're going to do it from scratch. So let's go ahead and take the same character in a different pose. I'd like to flip her, so I'm going to select and click the flip button. And then let's add some text. Select the font that you like, double click to enter, and then you'll just type in your text. I'll add a few more elements here. Okay, that should be fine. Now let's do some work with the text. Let's make this larger. And let's change the color. Click the gear icon and select a color. We'll go over all these options in another video. And then we want to line them up. Now if we click the show grid button, makes lining up your text a little easier. And that should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the grid. And then maybe let's add some the cat again. Let's use a different cat. And then maybe a dog. Okay, so we have our second scene. Next, we should add a voiceover and some music to our video. So to do that, we're going to go over to the Sounds button. And there's two ways you can do this. You can either upload an existing voiceover that you've already created, or you can create a voiceover on the fly. We'll start with the uploading of a voiceover here in Sounds. Click the blue plus sign, and then you're just going to browse for your file. You can also drag and drop it, which I'm going to do right now. It's an mp3 file, and this is just a dummy one that I created. Click continue, and then you'll find it in your list. So once you find it in your list of sounds, you simply drag and drop it. Since this is a voiceover, I'm going to put it in this voiceover track. And you'll see that it's pretty close in size. If I want to change the length, I can do that. What you want to do is, is get your little handle over it, and then you can just shorten 
that to the beginning. Likewise, you can do the same on this end if you want. And then just position it into your scene. So now I have a voiceover. And then music is also located here in sounds. And then you'll just scroll through and start listening to music that you until you find what you'd like. Again, all of the music that Doodly includes in, in this library is royalty free, so you can use it in your videos. There are categories, so if you wanted to, to just look at music only, you can do that. Let's take this one, it's about the right length, and you just drag it into the music track and place it. Now you'll see it is a little longer than my video. I have a couple options here. I can either make this video longer. So if I go into my scene settings, I can add extra time at the end of the scene. Let's say five seconds. And that's perfect. Likewise, if I had my heart set on it ending where it did end, if I want it to be shorter, I'll go back to that length. Now I can just take this and drag it so it ends here, okay? Now we probably want to fade out this music rather than have it abruptly end. So if you right click, you get the option to fade in and fade out. So I right clicked and now it's going to do a short fade here. If I wanted it to be a more gradual fade, I can lengthen it. Oftentimes you'll find the music's a little louder than you like. So if you click here on the speaker, you have a volume control. So just drag and drop until you get it where you like it. And we have it lower like that. If you want to add some sound effects, you can add additional tracks. So you just click on the three dots and choose add track. So now you can have another track containing sound effects or another voiceover or whatever you want to do here. Now, if you want to record your own voiceover on the fly, you can do that in Doodly as well. So let's go ahead and delete this voiceover that we added earlier. You just select it and then over here on the right, there's an X, click the X and go ahead and confirm that you want to remove it. Okay, so now that we have a free narration track here, we can go ahead and click the plus sign to record audio. At this point, it is not recording yet. You'll notice it's just blank right here and we're at zero, 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 zero. Once I click this button, it's gonna begin playing and then I can begin speaking at the appropriate moment. So here we go. Welcome to the cat doctor. Blah, 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 blah. So this is my voiceover. You'll see that it's recording. And when I click the stop button, it's going to stop. And here's my voiceover track right here. And once again, you can make your adjustments. You want to just clean it up a little. Maybe I don't want this ending portion. And while I timed it as the video played, maybe I feel like I should have come in a little bit earlier. So I can just drag and drop it over. And finally, I wanted to show you the camera tool. If you click this part of the timeline here and choose the plus button, you can add a zooming or panning effect. So I just did that and I now have a effect here. If I click on it, I can adjust the start and ending points of it, either doing a pan or a zoom. So if I want it to start, maybe I want to pull out, maybe I want to zoom out by clicking unlock start. And now I'm free to change its size in position okay so maybe I want to start here and then I want it to end full screen so I'm gonna click apply and if we hit preview you'll notice that it zoomed out it was pretty quick so I'm gonna make it a little bit slower 
So let's make it a five second camera move. And click preview once again. And there you go. Thanks for watching. In this tutorial video, we're going to go over the video settings of Doodly. Now, we are talking about the video settings button, which is this button here in the lower left corner. Not to be confused with the scene settings button up here in the upper right. So this standard settings button controls all of the settings for the entire video, whereas the scene settings button is for a scene by scene basis. So let's go ahead and open up settings and you'll get this video settings screen. You'll start on the far left here and have the option to change your background. If you recall, you selected a background when you first created your, your video, but now you can change your mind at any point. Once you've selected a background style, you can move on to the hand style. You'll notice that you can have right-handed or left-handed hand styles. Then underneath the real hand section are the real hand images that you can choose from. You have a variety here, and they do vary based on which option you have selected. For the whiteboard, you have the most choices. You have fewer choices for the dark board and green board, glass board, and then custom has the same choices as before. You can also choose not to have a hand at all, if so desired. Doodly also has some cartoon hands, which are great. They also have different options. And again, no hand. If you select the chalkboard options, you'll notice that the hands actually are holding a piece of white chalk instead of a pen. This is true also for the cartoon hands. Over here on the far right, you can change the title of your video then down here, you have a few more choices. Video ends when? This one is probably better explained by showing it to you, which I'll do in just a moment. But basically, you have two choices. The video ends when the animation ends, or when both the animation and audio end. So let's get out of here for a moment. And you'll see that I have a short little video, and it has a longer music track. So if I hit preview, you'll see the scenes and it's going to end when my animation ends. So in just a second, it's going to stop and boom, it's over. Now you couldn't hear the music because I've got it muted right now, but you'll see that the music continues on and on and on. And likewise, if I had a voice over here, I might still be talking over here. So. I may not want that. So if I don't want that, I would go into video settings and I would change this to when both the animation and audio end. Click apply. And now if we hit preview, you'll see it's a much longer track. Previously, it stopped right here, right about now. But now you'll see it continues playing. So I can hear the music in my headphones right now. And if I had a narration, it would still continue, but it freezes on this last image. So it just depends on what effect you're going for and the particulars of your video. Okay, let's go back into settings and continue. I'm gonna change this back and scene transitions. So you might have noticed that every time the scene changed in my video, the image swiped to the left and the new image appeared. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's gonna swipe. Okay, we have a new scene, swipe. And that's how it'll go for each and every 
scene that comes into this particular video. That's the default, but there are other options. You can have it swipe right, up, down, mixed, or even camera panning, which looks something like this. So you notice how it went down to the corner. That went down to the corner. So that's just a different effect. The next option is erase mode. Right now I have it in smart mode. And if you look at this particular arrow here, okay, notice how it's overlapping on top of another image. Now when we hit preview, the hand is going to erase an area for that arrow. So let's take a look. There he goes, the finger erased it. And then he drew it in. And that's a neat effect, but if you don't like that effect, you can turn that off or you can change it to eraser. See what that looks like. So the hand used an eraser. Let's turn it off. And this time there's going to be no erasing. He just draws it in. Now smart mode alternates between the finger erase mode or the smart erase mode, depending on how the image is sized or whatnot. You know, if it's just a small corner, then it's going to be a finger. But it, if it's going to cover this entire rectangle area, it might be the eraser instead. Let's go back in. And then this corner here is all about the resolution. Again, this is something that you set at the beginning when you first create the video, but you can change it at any time. And this is one area where you can do that. So right now it's at the default of 480p. In my opinion, that's a little too small, so I'm going to change it and I'm going to do it at 1080. So that's 1920 by 1080. I'm going to choose to constrain the aspect ratio right now. And that is how it will be. You do have other options. You can make it sized for Facebook and Instagram, which makes it a square. So it's exactly 1000 by 1000 and you'll notice constraint aspect ratio has been turned off. So that way the rectangle is no longer a rectangle. It is now a square. And then finally down here in the lower portion, you have enable autosave. And this just means that Doodly is going to save your video every minute automatically. So you won't lose your work if you forget to save. Hit apply. And you'll notice, remember I had set it to the Facebook square format. See how the aspect ratio has changed from a rectangle to a square. If you recall, we could change the title of the video in video settings. We can also change it up here. Just real quick and easy. There's one last thing I wanted to show you, and that was how to duplicate your video so that you can make multiple versions of it. To do that, you're going to do it in my videos. Here's the video that I just created. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click duplicate video. Now I have a copy of it. So maybe I wanted to have a whiteboard version and now I want to have a blackboard version. So I'm going to go ahead and click it to edit it, go to settings, change it, and maybe I'll give it a different name. So if we hit preview, there's our video. And that's the basics of video settings. Thanks for watching. In this tutorial video, we're going to go over some of the settings that you can adjust when you're working with characters, props, and text.
So let's get started. We'll start by adding a character to our scene, as well as a prop. Let's put a doggy in and some text. You notice I just drag and drop them into the scene. Now I'm going to double click to enter my text. And there we have it. As you can see, it needs a little bit of work, doesn't it? My character is a little too small compared to my dog. The dog's off the screen. My title's just randomly placed. So let's start by selecting the item. And then if you hover over any of these corners here, you get a double-sided arrow, okay? So you can use any of them, whichever one is you want to use, and just drag it in or out to adjust the size. You can also put your mouse on top of the character and move the item around. So let's place him right there. We'll do the same with the dog. We're gonna move it up a little and then let's make it a little smaller. Let's put the dog near the man. It's man's best friend, right? And then you'll see that we have the option here to flip it or send it to the back. So now the man is in front. Okay, so you can send your characters and props forward and backwards. Or if you prefer, you can delete the item completely by clicking the trash can. Confirm. Now, asset settings here. This is a little too small for my taste, so I'm just going to make it larger. And that's a good start. But we have more things we can do by clicking this little icon here asset settings. So this particular section right here, the font size, is specific to the fonts. But the X and Y and rotate options are available in the props settings as well. So let's just start from the top and work our way down. X and Y. What is this and why does it matter? These are coordinates for your item. So let's see if I move it down coordinates are going to change, right? See, so, so they're different. So you might want to make a note of those settings for your future slides. For example, if I want my future slides to have titles in a similar location, then I'd want to make note of these settings. So I'm going to write those down real quick. 551 by 178, the font size of 73. So let's go ahead and create another slide with some text. Now I could guess, maybe that's where I want it. I don't know though, let's take a look. Since I know my settings, I can go ahead and type them in here. So 551 by 178 and the font size 73. So I was close on the size, but a little off on the location. So there, now if I go back, I have the text in the appropriate location. So let's go back into settings. Color. So you can change the color. Click on the little swatch there and either choose one of the favorites down here and apply or you can use the slider here to find a color, or you could even enter your hex number or your RGB numbers if you know them. You can also use this little dot here to fine tune the color to whatever it is that you're looking for. Click kind of in this area to get rid of that swatch panel and click apply. So there's my colored text. I can do the same thing with my characters and props. I can change their colors so I could have a red outline if I wanted. I'm going to go back to black. You'll notice here when I'm working with the character, I have a width and height setting. So I can go ahead and change that if I wanted to. 
notice that makes the height larger as well. I can also change the rotation here if I'd like and flip it if I wanted to. Click apply and your changes have been made. I hit control Z to undo that change. Right next to color we have opacity and what this means is, let's go ahead and turn it way down. You can use your plus or minus buttons to do that or you can just go in here and type it in. 50%. I typed in 50 and then hit the tab key. Click apply. And notice now that my character is much lighter than he was before. So that's opacity. Down here at the bottom section, we have enter animation and exit animation. Currently, they're at the default settings. So I have my man being drawn in for three seconds. It takes three seconds for him to be drawn. I can change that here and make it much shorter and hit apply. If we hit preview, he's only gonna, it's only gonna take one second to draw him on as opposed to three seconds, which was the default. I'm gonna go for two seconds. In addition to the draw, you can choose none instead. So now if we were to preview it, he's, he's not gonna draw it all, he's already there. And just asset settings was drawn. I'm gonna show it to you again because that went pretty quick. Okay. So if you want something already to be on the board before the scene starts, you just want to set that to none. I'm going to go back to draw. I'm going to set it to two seconds. And then over here on exit animation, the default is none. And it's zero seconds, obviously. But you can change that if you'd like and put it to erase. So what will happen now is when we hit preview, my scene's going to be created, and then before any transition, he's going to be erased. And then we have the transition. You can set the duration of the erasure. So maybe you want it to be really quick erase. So maybe one second, two seconds, let's do two seconds. And preview. He's drawn, asset settings, erase, two seconds. Now, the character did reappear. You might have noticed it during the transition. That image appeared briefly. Now, we are in preview mode, and preview mode is not a completely accurate representation of what you're going to get on the final video. So I'm not too worried about that. And finally, we have this invert option. So I'm going to go ahead and click it so you can see what happens. He disappeared, <laughs> right? Well, what really happened, he's still there, but his color changed from black to white. And since it's white on a whiteboard, you can't see it. I'll go back and change it. And the reason for that is kind of convoluted. In most cases, you're not gonna need to ever worry about that button. But when you're working with chalkboard videos, Go ahead and change this to a chalkboard. It can come into play with that. So I'm going to click invert and now he's there. In most cases, Doodly will automatically do the inverting for you when you switch from whiteboard to chalkboard. But there are certain circumstances where it doesn't like what you just saw. That's because I had turned his opacity way down, if you recall earlier. So I had done some editing to him and therefore I needed to click that invert button to get him to appear. In an earlier version of Doodly, if you used imported images on your Blackboard video, you would have to manually invert them yourself. They've since changed that, so you no longer have to do that. But if you have some existing assets that you previously imported that were inverted, they would look horrible now that Doodly automatically inverts it because Doodly is now inverting it back for you. So that little button allows you to override that. 
So if you have older assets that are in that negative mode, then you're going to want to use that little checkbox if, whenever you need to use them in a Blackboard video. Okay, so let's go back to our whiteboard. I'm going to turn off invert, get my guy back, okay? And that's the basics for adjusting your asset settings. Thanks for watching. In this tutorial video, we're going to go over some of the settings that you can adjust on a scene by scene basis. Earlier, we talked about the video settings, which is down here in the lower left, which adjusts the settings for the entire video. Right now, we're going to talk about this button here, Scene Settings, and it's just for the scene that you're currently on. Let's take a look. Right now, by default, it's set to use the board and hand style from video settings, which is down here. Well, we might not want that. Maybe we want to have a glass board for this scene. In that case, we're just going to unclick the check mark, and now I can change to glass board. Likewise, I can change the hand style if I prefer a different hand. Maybe I want to do a cartoon hand for this first scene. I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. And now if we hit Preview, we should see a cartoon hand doing the glassboard style, which we do. But it was only for that one scene because I set it only for that scene. Okay? Let's go back into Scene Settings and see what else we can do. We can adjust our exit animation as well as put some extra time at the end of the video. So what does that mean exactly? Let's start with exit animation. Let's take a look at that video one more time. He draws it and it swipes to the left. Okay. So let's go back into scene settings and sure enough it swipes to the left. Well what are our other choices? Well we can swipe up, right, down and erase. So let's just do one. Swipe up. See what that looks like. There it goes. It goes up. The other directions are the same. Let's see what happens when we hit erase. Did you see that little eraser went through? And then finally, let's see what it looks like with nothing there. So those are your exit animations. Now this extra time at the end by default is half a second. You may have noticed when we were previewing these exit animations, as soon as he writes scene settings, we are off to the next scene. Oftentimes that doesn't give you enough reading time to actually read what the hand has written, or maybe you want to actually have a voiceover talk a little bit longer before the scene changes. So that's where scene settings comes in for the extra time at the end. So let's change that. Let's change it to say five seconds. So I typed in five and then I hit the tab key and now I'm going to click apply. Now if we hit preview, we'll have some breathing room between the two scenes. One, two, three, four, five, and it should change there. And that's it for scene settings. Thanks for watching. In this tutorial video, we're going to go over importing your own assets. So let's get started. I'm going to import an image that I want to use in my doodly video. So I'm going to go to the blue plus sign and I'm going to browse for the file. It's on my desktop and I'm going to click open. You'll notice that the title is the file name. If I want to change it, I can change it or I can just accept it. Click continue. And here's my image. Now, if I were to hit preview, 
you'll see that Doodly does its best to draw the image. It does basically a scribble pattern that goes from left to right. Now, if you wanted to make it a little more precise, you can tell Doodly exactly how to draw it by clicking on this pencil icon. This opens up a panel here on the right. You'll see the live preview. See, this is Doodly right here, drawing it in. As described, Doodly scribbles it in like so. Okay, so that's the live preview. Right now, the background is set to the default white. It's a black image, so I don't need to change the background. But sometimes if you have an image that has a lot of light colors, it's hard to see the lines. So you can change it to black or transparent. I'm going to stick with white. Now I can save and return as I'm editing this or I can return without saving. I have some tools here that I can use as I'm working with the image, which I'll show you as we go. Likewise, the path size, that will come into play once we have a path here. Your zoom buttons, lets you zoom in or out for greater detail. How long it's gonna take for the animation to be drawn. By default, it's three seconds. The reveal mode, it's either going to be draw or fade in. I'm going to go for draw for now and I'll show you fade in later. And then the reveal paths. So each stroke is a path. So right now we have one path. If I click here, beginning, you'll see I'm creating a path. It's kind of hard to see it right now. It's just very thin. If I change the path size, see now I can make it larger or smaller. You'll notice that the live preview is now showing my one stroke, okay? I can make adjustments by dragging on each of these points. And then I can just make my drawing path here and again make the adjustments control Z if you make a mistake now I can make it a little fatter so that's my first stroke now I'm going to add a new one clicking new path and I'm going to make these little pieces come in And then I'm just going to continue up here, okay? And maybe I don't want to reveal those little, I don't know what you call them, those little spikes. Maybe I don't want to reveal them yet. So I'm just going to make my path avoid those little spiky areas for the moment. I'm just going to adjust this so the spikes don't show up. Control Z making some adjustments here and then I want to do a new path to get this last little section in and then now maybe it's time to do those little spikes so I'm going to go new path and I'm just going to zigzag to get them off and then we'll do a path for each of these and I think I'm just going to make this fatter so that it just does the whole wheel well in one stroke. Right, new path. And same for this one. It's going to be a nice fat path. And I like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and return. And let's take a look at the preview. And that's exactly as I expected. Now if we want to do some fine tuning, we select it, hit the pencil icon, and we're back where we were. Now we can use some of these other tools. I want to zoom in a little and see if I need to make any adjustments. Maybe I want 
and that to go a little further. Okay, you can pan over. I can now zoom back out. Maybe I want the animation to go a little bit slower because it did seem like that it drew pretty quick. So let's say six seconds. If you want to change the mode you're in, you can change it. So when you're in this arrow mode, you're not going to accidentally click and add points to your screen. See, I'm clicking like crazy, but nothing's happening. If I click the plus sign, now this active stroke anywhere I click is going to be added to that. I did control Z to undo those. Now I'm back to just my selection tool. So now I can select the different paths without accidentally adding points. Sometimes you want to delete a point. So what you would do is click the delete button and you'll notice when you hover over a point, you can delete it now, okay? And then if I want to add a point, I'm gonna click plus. So let's take a look at it now. Save and return. Preview. It's gonna take a little bit longer for it to draw because it's a six second duration. And that looks fine. That was with the drawing effect. Now let's click the pencil again and let's change it to fade. So instead of drawing in, it's going to fade in. Let's hit preview. And there it is, fading in, six seconds. Now that was a PNG file. So with a PNG file or a JPEG, if you want custom paths, you do have to do them manually with that edit button, as I showed you. Now, if you have an SVG file, that's another story because SVG files have paths already in them. Now you can import an SVG file and load its paths and Doodly will draw along those points for you automatically. So let's go ahead and do one. I have a little dinosaur that I found, dino.svg. And I'll keep that name. And here he is. Let me go ahead and delete this car for now. So he's an SVG. So if I click this pencil icon, you'll see Doodly's doing that default scribble. There it is. But we want to see what the actual SVG paths look like they might be fine for us. So let's go ahead down here and click load SVG paths. I'm going to say, okay. And here they are. There's seven of them and they look like it'll be just fine. Yeah. You see it's happening. So let's go ahead and hit save and return preview. And now the hand draws the dinosaur for me. It's as easy as that. Not only can you import your own assets, you can share them with other Doodly users. For example, if I wanted to share this dinosaur, I could right click on him and choose the share option. I give him a name and then I enter my friend's email address. You can also export some of your items. And if somebody shared an asset with you, you'd find it over here in your shared button. And finally, if you're looking for more assets, you can always go to Doodly's Marketplace and you can purchase bundles of graphics that are perfect for using with Doodly. Importing audio is also very easy. Simply click on sounds and once again, click the blue plus sign. And you're just going to browse for your sound file. In this case, I have it on my desktop. I'm going to drag and drop it in. And there it is. The title's fine, so I'm going to click continue. And there it is, right here at the top of my list. I'm just going to drag and drop it into my soundtrack. And now I have some animal sounds. So what about fonts? If you recently purchased Doodly, you probably only have a few in your font section. 
you'll see I have quite a few that I have uploaded myself. I got most of them from fonts.google.com. That's a great place to get them. There are other sources as well. But how do you get them into Doodly? You click this blue plus sign and you browse your computer for your fonts. In this case, mine is in the downloads. It's the Acme font and I already unzipped it, which is what you're going to need to do. So here's my unzipped folder, Acme. And here are my fonts. This is the one right here, the TFF file. Go ahead and click open. It's going to come in. I'm fine with that name. I'm going to click continue. And I now have acme.regular. It's a brand new font for me. And I can go ahead and type in my text. And I'm going to go ahead and click done. There it is. While I'm at it, I can change the style from writing from right from left to right, which is traditional, you know, with English and other languages, or I can change it to right to left if so desired. I can also use the word wrap setting, which allows me to have it on multiple lines. And there you have it. How to import your own assets into Doodly. Thanks for watching. I've already created a simple scene that I'd like to animate with some camera movements. So we'll start full screen. We'll zoom in here, pan down here, and then finally zoom out to full screen once again. So to do that, you're going to go down into your timeline and find the zoom and pan section. Click the plus button and you'll notice a little FX section appears. Now you can adjust the duration of the camera movement by stretching it or shrinking it. In this case, I think probably about four seconds might be good. We'll find out <laughs> as we go. So to start making your adjustments, you're going to go ahead and click it and a new screen appears here. You'll notice you have a start section on the left and an end section on the right. You also have an unlock start button and a show preview button. Right now my start is locked and I want to keep it that way because it's fine exactly the way it is. My ending I want to adjust. So all I'm going to do is reframe it here to where I want the camera to end. So think of this as your camera's viewfinder. So this is where it's going to end. If we hit preview, we can take a look at that. So it just zooms right in to where I set it. It's a little, um, I don't like this black here on the left, so I'm just going to make a slight adjustment. Maybe make it a little smaller down. Now let's preview that one more time. And that's better. Now here you can toggle between your start and end if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And let's hit the actual preview button, see how that's starting to look. Okay, that's great. Now this camera will stay here until I tell it to do otherwise. So right now a lot of drawing is happening off camera. So we need to make our camera movement come in. So let's, let's let it hover there for about a second and then we'll add another camera move. So in this case, I'm moving the timeline to where I want the new camera movement to come in. How about right there? And in this case, since I have a precise point, I want to do something different. Instead of hitting the plus button, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add panning and zooming. And you'll notice it appears right against the playhead here. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that 
and I'm going to adjust my camera movements. I like where it's starting. If I wanted to change that, I could change it by unlocking it, but I want it to stay right there. But the end, I want to be different. I want it to come right down here, so I'm just going to slide it down to where I want it to end. And again, I'm going to hit the preview button and take a peek. And do that one more time. Okay, so my timing's a little bit off, but I like the movement, so I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And I'm going to move this just a bit further to give the wonderful world of doodly time to be written out before the camera moves. So let's see if that's sufficient. That's pretty good. I think we want to hover it just a little bit longer. So I'm going to just move that down just a touch. And that should be fine. Let's just take one final preview to be sure. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, so in this final movement, I want it to happen right after the You Got This finishes up. So in this case, I am going to click the plus button and that's going to put my effects right next to the previous one. And now I'm going to go ahead and click into it and make my adjustments. Again, start is perfectly fine, so I'm not going to mess with it, but I would like my end. Oops, it's okay. No worries, we just stretch it out. I want my end to be full screen. I'm going to hit apply. We could preview if we'd like, so let's do that first. Okay, maybe I was premature in putting it right up against that. I do want to pause to allow sufficient time for the word to be drawn out. So I'm just going to, once again, move it. And preview. Make sure the timing is how I like it. Okay, that's pretty good. I think maybe just a slight delay will be fine. Just a little bit further. Fast forward a bit here. Okay. Got this. Perfect. So I like how this scene turned out with the camera movements and the timing of the movements. Both are very easy to set up and adjust. Finally, before we wrap this up, I wanted to go over the difference between this new zoom and pan feature and the existing camera panning transition that you may already be familiar with. If you're not familiar with it, over here in video settings, you have a scene transition option. Right now I have it set to camera panning so that we can see the difference. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. You'll see I've already created a scene so we can see the transition between the two. So if I hit preview and fast forward a bit so we don't have to watch the entire thing, you'll notice the camera is going to pan and the new scene appears. You'll also notice my first scene is still visible. Camera panning is a transition between the scenes. So I've got two scenes right here. The camera moves between them. Zoom and pan effects take place within a single scene. So right here I have one scene and multiple effects. Another key difference is with camera panning transition, you get what you get. You can't control which way the camera moves and comes in. Sometimes it comes in from the left, sometimes it moves down to the bottom, sometimes it comes in from the right. You just get what you get with that. On the other hand, with the camera and pan effects on your scene, you can control exactly where the camera starts, where it ends, how fast it lasts, you can adjust where it comes in, and so forth. So there's a lot better control for you right there, and it's a great feature. So that's it for the zoom and pan effects. Thanks for watching.
In this tutorial video, we're going to go over exporting your videos. Now, if you recall, when you first create a video, you're going to be prompted to enter the resolution that you'd like to use. Now, you can change this at other points during the production process. For example, you can go over here to settings and you can change your resolution here to the desired amount. Likewise, when you go to export your video over here, you get this screen, which you also see on my canvas, and you have a choice to change the resolution right here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I'm not ready to export. So currently I have it set to 480p, which is the default. I'll, I will change that most likely when I go to export it, but for now that's fine. So let's talk a little bit more about these resolutions. I'm going to go to this screen here. You'll see here I have three monitors with three videos at three different resolutions. So down here is the 480 and it's pretty small. 720 is a little larger and then again 1080 is my full screen image. Now if I were to have the video in a like a smartphone at 480 it would look fine. But if I were to play it full screen on a large monitor, it's going to turn out all pixelated like this. So that's why you want to be cognizant of the different resolutions. Likewise, the larger you go, the larger the file is. So a 1080p video is going to be possibly megabytes and megabytes and gigabytes <laughs> large, whereas a 480p file is going to be much smaller. So you need to kind of weigh how the video is going to be used and take all of that into consideration. Then there's another choice, the Facebook and Instagram choice. This is for square videos, okay? So you'll notice if I have a little Facebook post here, the video needs to be square to fit in it properly. And my video here is rectangular. So what happens if we want to make a square. Let me show you. We go back to this screen and I'm going to go back to settings and like I mentioned you can change your resolution. I'm going to go ahead and choose Facebook and Instagram. It's going to change it to 1000 by 1000. You'll notice that's a square and the settings will turn into a square here. So instead of having a white rectangle I now have a white square. Now, I feel this is a little too small for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and increase the size so that I take advantage of the format. And that looks nice. So now I can export it and it'll be a square for my Facebook page. If I go over here, you'll see that the square fits nicely in the allotted space. If you have a specific resolution that you have in mind, you can also change that. So let me go to export real quick and say you want a very specific resolution. So say you want it to be 1000 by say 1200 for whatever reason. So you can change it there and that would be that. If you want to constrain the aspect ratio, simply put a check mark there and it will make the adjustment accordingly. Now frames per second is going to determine how smooth the video plays. 30 is the default and that's typically just fine. If you want it to go a little bit smoother, you can go higher, change it, and this will again make your video file a little bit larger because instead of having 30 images per second, you now have 60, so you've doubled it, 60 images per second. So you'll need to figure out what you want and change it. So you'll need to keep that in mind as well. 30 is usually perfectly fine. And then of course quality, you've got maximum, high, medium, and low. So you might want to do a draft at 62% just to see how the timing is going and see how it looks and then once you're happy with it, then export it at the full maximum of 100%. So let's go up here real quick. You can change the file format from MP4, MKV, OGG, 
or WebM. The MP4 format is by far the most popular, so it is the default. And then finally, when you're ready to export your video, you can accept either the default destination or you can change it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to my desktop. And I'm gonna go ahead and export it by clicking the Save button and then Continue. And now Doodly will do its thing. I recommend just being patient. Don't leave this screen, just let it go. And soon enough, it will be done. Okay, now it's done exporting and it has this convenient little button here, Show Exported File. And Finder or Windows Explorer will open showing you your video. All you have to do is click it and there it is. Move it over and here's my square format video. This is the one I resized, and then these are the ones that I did not resize, and they look good. And that's it for exporting videos. Thanks for watching. Hey fellow doodlers, today I'm extremely proud to introduce you to a powerful new add-on called Doodly Rainbow. With Doodly Rainbow, you'll be able to instantly select full color versions of every single image inside of your Doodly library. You'll double the number of images at your disposal, plus you'll be able to create much more engaging professional videos to help your Doodly videos stand out from the rest. And you'll be able to do it all with a single click of your mouse. Here's how it works. When you order Doodly Rainbow, the add-on will automatically activate inside of your copy of Doodly. Simply open up Doodly as you normally would, and you'll notice a brand new button located in the left-hand panel. That is the Doodly Rainbow add-on. Click it to turn it on, and you'll be able to easily toggle back and forth between the regular black and white Doodly images and the all-new Doodly Rainbow full-color images. As simple as Doodly Rainbow is to use, it sure wasn't easy to develop. It's taken our team thousands of man hours and nearly six figures to manually color thousands and thousands of images by hand. Not to mention the complex technology required to make Doodly Rainbow so simple to use. With that said, we truly hope you love it as much as we do. To get access to the Doodly Rainbow add-on, simply click the button next to this video and get started creating amazing full-color Doodle videos today. Please click the like and subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll be notified when we release free trainings. And if you have any questions about what we cover, leave a comment and the awesome Doodly community would love to help. Thanks for watching.